Hello and welcome to See If It Sticks, the podcast that takes your first world silly little problems, puts them in a various uh, devices of fixing, where Ross does the, the hand movements for this, keep on doing it, um, and churns out delicious gloopy solution juice. I am your host for this evening. Dominic Alexander. I am not your host, I am Ross Gilbert. And I am also in this room, Dan Hall. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Right, I'm going to stop that voice now. Um, no, how's you, everybody you doing? Commit, Dom. You have to commit yeah. to the whole hour. <laughs> how is everybody doing today? Good? Wonderful, yes. Good? You're looking very tan. Uh, well, I've been in the pool. Uh, ah, I see. Uh, I've been in the pool, you know, when the sun hits the pool, it pops up in your face. Uh, I've been no, hitting the, We I, don't have a fucking pool, Dom. I've been out in the sunshine. <laughs> Dom... Tom literally takes uh, 20 minutes at the oven at 180 and he comes out more tanned than I have ever been in my life. That's right. That's I, right. I take to a tan quite well, but you can't see it over the tattoos now. No. Yes, I, I, I always take to a tan quite well, um, ever since I was a wee one. But yeah, so that's me, tan Dom, just being tan Dom on the podcast. <laughs> Looking good. Mm. Do you have the so, little thing, the little silver thing under Yeah, chair? yeah, on the lilo. Yeah. You want to get cuz you got that sort of wavy hair, you want to dye that like a nice peroxide um, blonde. Yeah, and yeah. then start yeah, doing like that thing dude. where you waggle your Shaka bra. Where you waggle your pinky and your thumb yeah. and go and start calling everyone bra and uh wear shell necklaces. Yeah. 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 And wear a shirt, a Larry shirt but undone with flip-flops. I do that already. Oh yeah. That's right, bro. Um, bra. Matilda got some new shoes the other day from work, and I'm sure they're called something like pool slips or something. Of course, of pool course, that. pool slips. Uh, this is the cool super dry flip flop, is it? Yeah, it's for mm. wearing around the pool, and you can just slip your foot in it. Apparently, so they're like. You know what I wear around the pool? Old pair of Vans. So yeah. I wear around the pool nothing, nothing no. at all. But that's no, <laughs> that's no different to usually. Usually, you just nothing wear those. At all. You just nothing wear. At all. You just <laughs> stupid sexy flanders. You just wear, just wear those floral shirts undone. And yeah. a pair of flip flops and. Uh, that's and about that, that's it. it. Yes. That is about it. I've I've um, been known over the years for my uh, exhibitionism. No, well, my my sort of single piece, <laughs> single, single pieces of attire. Wouldn't yeah. you say onesies? Yes. Like, like, I, I, all I'm going to say is I'm glad you stopped wearing that one sock. <laughs> yeah, that was that was my teenage years. But like when I sort of got towards my twenties, do you remember when I used to just walk around the house in a pair of boxers and a dressing gown? I remember you walking around my house like that. Yeah. Like I was very much was it an open dressing gown? And this yeah. is even before I, <laughs> yeah. I watched yeah. the Big Lebowski, so you I wasn't even trying to emulate the dude. You couldn't get it closed. But I was just the dude personified at that time. Yeah. I even had the little beard, wore the sunglasses, yeah. It was good. You, yeah, you yeah. Like and then cereal, and then cereal all the time. sort of through my twenties I do eat cereal all the time. <laughs> I, I love cereal. But then in, during my twenties it was the T shirt with like the check Russian? shirt over the top. Huh? Do you like uh, a white Russian? I've never well. tried a white Russian. They're quite probably, nice. Yeah. Do you know what I miss? What? My my favourite item of your clothing. Do 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 go do 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 Godzilla. Yeah, your matrix coat. Oh. Oh yes, I uh, well, I've got something similar now. This is fast becoming my I wear it everywhere coat. Um it's sort of a long it's sort of a duster. Thing, <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Yeah. But more stylish. I've grown up. Good. Today I'm wearing Fred Perry polo and uh, American Eagle jeans. Here um, for anybody that wants to know. Primani top, Primani jeans. <laughs> Primani shoes. T-shirt and trackies for me. Adidas trackies though. Okay, don't say don't on. undersell yourself. Yeah, they are Adidas trackies. Yeah. ASOS t-shirt and uh yeah, the shoes. That that's probably the most expensive thing that I yeah. own. That will and the pants. The this pants. is our audition these for this morning with their 120 quid these fucking uh Air Max. Were they? Yeah. Air Max 95. Um play that again. Yeah, we're doing all this vamping about clothes because we have no Dan mail or problems no, today. No, I've forgotten to print it off. Ah, I see. Sorry. I sort of came in and I was like, where's all the paperwork? Yes, unfortunately, we have a lack of A4 paper in my office. I'll tell you moment. what else there isn't this week. A live stream. No. And that is, is no my fault stream. because I didn't charge the GoPro up. And then I also forgot the... Charging lead, it's and I've got two week. like whole cables, but they're not the right size. Yeah, Dom ran out the building twice, so enthusiastically going, "I've got one! No, I've got one! I was in the car." Come like this one. I was like, "No, it's not that one." And then he came in and did it again, and we got really excited. But it's a shame. I go back down to the car now. I open the glove box. And yeah, I, yeah. I, a micro, um, a mini USB will fall out. Dom was yeah. like an excited dog. He came back into the room with the cable in his mouth. 
Looking really pleased with himself. The second time he came back with just a big stick. <laughs> I don't know where I even found that. Got distracted. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Squirrel. Um, yeah. So yeah, I suppose- We finally have, have A4 paper in the office, which is why the problem this week is printed. It's silly because if only we had the live stream because it looks so ridiculous that we've got A3 pieces of paper <laughs> with emails on them. They just look I, like they're really close to the lens. Yeah. They? I thought it was best not to uh, print anything else off. That's fair dues. Well then- Shall we you want a get on with the show? <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. Ross, have you got a problem? I do. Who's it from? Lardy Basto. Where's he from? Planet Planet. And I think I might know who you are, Lardy Basto. Keep on going. His message today says, a pop a doodle do gherkins. <laughs> After some unpleasant Classic Lardy. Weekend, Classic yeah. Lardy. <laughs> Go on, son. Keep them coming. Uh, it says, after some unpleasantries at the weekend, I need your thoughts on those most awkward of situations. Buffets. 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 Ah. Buffings. Not the <laughs> uh, famous American investor, Warren Buffett. No. Nope. Uh, buffets. <laughs> How many times is too many to go up? Ooh. Ooh. That is a good question. Do you load up to begin with and then stay away? Is two plates wrong? Do you send someone else up for you? So many questions. But what are your golden rules to avoid embarrassment, arguments, and all-out war? Help me, mighty peeps. Now, I think a buffet says well more than one plate, right? Well, they give you a fucking meal, wouldn't they? We've got a little addition, oh, an, ad- an addendum to this. Addendum. He says, "Afternoon, jizz jugglers." Oh, oh classic! Classic, lovely master. Yet again, I am most humble that you're swiftest to address. I don't know why I've gone like, yet again, I am most humble yes. that you're swiftest to address my dilemma of cancer-free smoking. I just wanted to say, apropos to my, apropos my last email, can you also consider carveries as well, not just buffets? Well, carvery is a buffet, isn't it? Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, there's a very slight difference there. Um, you uh, sh- not sh- are you finishing? Sorry, I'm just um, <laughs> finishing up on your game. No, no, no. I was actually looking at something, just uh, making sure I was in the zone. Ooh, yes. Are you looking at kittens? Well, let's hang in there, cat things. <laughs> was it the definition of apropos? Yes. <laughs> was it? No. <laughs> apropos of nothing, Dan. I am. Um, the definition of apropos? Well, you know, I weirdly it's one of those words that's so obscure, but. I think I know what it means. Go on. Because there's a, there's a no effects song and it's got the word apropos in it. And, yeah. And I always wondered what it meant when I was a kid. Did you not look it up? Oh, I think it, have a dictionary I think it, it sort of like means like regarding something, doesn't it? Like with regards to. Yeah. With regards to. It sounds yeah. like that would fit. Yeah, with regards to. Yeah. Apropos of nothing is the sort of common phrase. I, isn't I, it? I'll, I'll give you the dictionary definition if you want. Go for it. As I was saying before, though, the buffet, I feel like if they wanted you to only go up once, they would give you a meal. Oh, yeah, of course. So uh, uh, twice is okay. There you go. Yeah. With reference to or concerning. Yeah. Yes. Was like. There we go. Yeah. Well, And so with the carvery, a carvery's, I don't know, a carvery, I guess, is there more so that you can pick what meats you want. I went to a mix. carvery the other week. See, the thing is, I would be probably more likely to make a returning trip to a carvery because it's a bit more sort of faceless, isn't it? I, I think. Like, you go to... No, a, a buffet's there without a face. Nobody's serving you. No one's serving you at a buffet. Someone's cutting oh, your oh, meat. Oh, oh, you mean... You mean Carvery, the man I, carves the meat for you. Right. Mm. See, I was thinking of like, you know, if you're like, like a wedding buffet and there right. is sort of like the catering staff are stood behind it and they're judging you. No, I was thinking more of like a buffet, like a Chinese buffet. Oh, right. Okay. Like in... Like, well, let's combine them all. Let's like combine Chinese them in the wedding as in, well. In Chinatown. I was about to say Chinese town there. Well, I mean, I go to a Chinese buffet in Canterbury from time to time. Ah, yes. Uh, the one that, it's not a buffet, though. It's not, but it's, it's, like an, all you can all, eat. it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. But you just order it. You don't go up. It, it just keeps coming to the table. Yeah. You just keep ordering more food and more food. I haven't been there in a long time, See, actually. See, oddly, even though that actually involves another sort of level of... Um, sort of interaction yeah i order more i probably order more like that and i'm more comfortable keep 
ordering more things from them than I am going up to a buffet. Because there's a level of anonymity in, in it, isn't there? Yeah. Because no one, people see the food coming to your table, but they don't know it's for you. Yeah, they just know true. it's for the table. See, and that's why I think a carvery is a bit more like that because sort of like not everyone is sort of like looking at you in a carvery. Like you sit down at like a table to yourself. And but you don't go back up for a carvery. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Carveries I've been to, you can go back up. What, to get more meat? Yeah. More anything. Really? Yeah. I went to a carvery the other day and you paid... it. Um, in their defence, it's a £4.60 carvery. Okay, yeah. Which is on point, price-wise. Um, I don't like carveries. As, no, I'm not a big fan of them anyway, but someone suggested it and we were near the place where they did the £4.60 carvery. Right, yeah. So um, we decided to go in. Genuine donkey meat. Well, they had gammon, they had beef, they had pork and they had chicken. Nice. No, I wasn't going to have chicken. I wasn't going to have the pork because it's been under a heat lamp all day. Yeah. So I had the beef and I had the gammon. And they give you a pretty good portion and you can have as much veg and they give you a giant Yorkshire pudding, which is oh, the size that's, of a that's, plate. That's, that's all I really it. want. I just want yeah. Yorkshire pudding with the the meat and potatoes and gravy inside it. I don't want I don't yeah. want any of the veg. They had um Could you do that? They had yeah, they you could if you want to. They had they had the choice between mashed potato, chips, roasties, and new potatoes. You know what? What a world. Really, really. Roasties and mash on the same plate was a fucking yeah. revelation. Really? Uh, that I can My nan always that does I, that on a Sunday roast anyway. Roast does she? Mash. She always, always has done since I was a kid. That I'm going to your nan's roast. That, that I can get my hand. I have either or. Never have more than one different kind of but carb. Chips. <laughs> chips with a roasty. Get out of town. I know. It's terrible. Get so what does he want us to solve? The embarrassment of going up? Well, or? he wants us to, to, to put a social standing in a thing or to let everyone know how many times is okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how I, how I work a buffet. Yep. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you my method. Then we can go around the table and we can, we can discuss the, Compare uh, notes. The, the pros and cons and we can all discuss. Mm-hmm. I tend to load up quite a hefty plate to begin with. Yes. And then hang around the buffet, if possible, a bit later on. Right, you know, like I'll put, I'll have my drink down at the table. So uh, I went to I, I went I went to an occasion a couple of months ago where there was sort of like buffet food on a table. So obviously it's in view of everyone. But then what I sort of do is I placed myself strategically next to the buffet, put my beer down on the table, and then if I want to just grab an olive or a little uh, little mini pizza slice, I can sort of grab it there and grab it there and then. It doesn't look like I'm going back up with a for a further plate, even though I did have a plate and a half mm. but it doesn't look like I'm going up there and loading up and loading up because I think that is are the you bit. one of those nibblers Danny you're the, you're the guy that stands out at the buffet just eating without a plate yeah because okay. the thing is I think the okay. plate it's, it's like the plate like makes people see it through sort of like yeah it's a plate of food I should only have a plate yeah, like yeah. A, a, a plate he's had three plates even though my initial plate was probably only enough food for a, a, a small child yeah because that's the problem with buffet isn't it you can't put Loads of, you know, you can't put like, you know, um, things with sauces in with like the pizza slice and Which then the pork yeah. pie. Stuff like that. It's going to get soggy. Yeah. So I, I, you know, <laughs> I need a couple of like plates. Logistics of the buffet. You know, like maybe, maybe that sort of my first plate might be your sauced dishes, like maybe yeah. some pastas or, or little things like that. But get some coleslaw on there. Um, sometimes I enjoy a sausage roll with a bit of coleslaw on it, weirdly. I yeah. don't, no, I, don't, okay, yeah. I don't know why. Anything with coleslaw on it's good for me. And then, Not and, then of and then sort of go up for some pizza slices, little mini sausages, that sort of thing. The kind of thing that you know I want to be untouched by other sauces and things like that. Should I tell you about my, my buffet method? Go on. So I will do like a, an assortment. I'll go up with a plate. I'll get an assortment of things. Yeah. And then I will go back on a second run. Once it's died down, everyone's kind of at least had a plate. Mm-hmm. And I'll fill up on pizza. That's pe- very important. Fill up on pizza. I'll go back for the mini pizzas. There's mini pizzas. I'm fucking done. Just give me a plate of mini pizzas. Right. Do you want to hear my method? Go on. Now, I have two different methods. But will right. this depend on the time of day? Or it depends it... on who's there. Okay. Ooh. Right. So if I'm there by myself or with Jem or my mates or something like that. The people I who know will... you will. No, no. Just people who aren't my mum. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you know what the second one is. Yeah. So I'll go up and I will load up and pick the best bits I like and once everybody's gone round, obviously that's that's yep. quite the. Yeah. I think that that's the done thing. We're saying that's a given. Yeah, that's right? a given. 
That's a given. Do I'll round go up as many fucking times as I want. Second because thing you is, don't get make a buffet if you aren't having someone there. If you don't, if you've invited me to a party, yeah, yeah, and you know I'm coming, and you know there's a buffet, yeah. you have put the margin of error in there. And you, know, you never queue the second time, do you? You never queue for the second time. The, the second time is always no. just a, a wander yeah, up. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 An and I'm the guy that people appreciate because I finish off all the fucking food. Yes. Yeah. Second method. If my mum's there, I'll go up and I'll get the heftiest fucking plate I can find. Because if my mum's there, don't fucking go up again. Don't you go up again. Don't you really? go up again. No, no, no. Once I saw Dom um, attend a family uh, gathering. Um, and because he knew that it was there was buffet food, he, he bought a 400 pound steel drum <laughs> to use as a plate. That's true. Slightly bigger he played, plate. He played the evening as well. Somehow, I, I, didn't, I did not know that, that, that Dom could play uh, Car- Caribbean instruments, but it was quite spectacular. Yeah. He, as well, if you have put He little... did 80s TV theme tunes. Yeah. yeah. If you put a little camp burner underneath as well, you can reheat yeah. the food. <laughs> You're one of those plate, plate warmers. Yeah. Mess. Hot plate. It's got a hot yeah. plate built in. Yeah. It makes it makes it ring a little bit bassier, but yeah. Um, yeah. do you know what? For those 80s theme tunes, it's worth it. I could do yeah. Night Rider. Blong, blah, 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 blah. Dom's rendition of The Bill. <laughs> <laughs> with, with two chicken drumsticks. How can you do that? How can you do that with a drum? Surely it was, The Bill is like quite like a whiny sound, isn't it? What? What's the, what's the Bill theme tune go like? You can't do that with a drum, can you? Isn't it kind of like, kind of like our spooky theme tune? How, how did the bill go? I can't remember now. I'll tell you. I've I've just got my stock theme tune in my head. Whenever I go to do any like uh, BBC theme tune from what, it's EastEnders, from the seventies to the nineties, I always it always ends up being Casualty. Oh yeah. Oh, what catchy! I almost did the Crystal Maze music. Dun, 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 that's, dun, the, dun, that, that's my problem. Every time dun, I do the Crystal dun, Maze, it ends up being Casualty. Dun, dun. Here we go, Bill theme. Is it still going, the Bill? No. Is it not? No, it's not. Oh, 1997. This is the theme tune used from 1988 to 1997. That's if it would fucking start, come on. Come on. Come on. You can do that on steel drums. Bong, this is what I'm saying. Bong, bong. Yeah. Bong. It's quite wee. Like, you, you can get a lot of sustain on a steel yeah. drum. Especially when it's heated. Yeah. Bit melty. All right, that's enough of that. What a theme tune, though. Damn it. But you can Bang. see how the confusion occurs. Did they not? It was just one guy clearly writing all these theme tunes. You just got a couple of notes. Swap those over. You can do a round. 80s TV theme tune medley. Yeah. But you know what? I was um I was sitting in my room the other day and I had sort of had an hour free. I just stuck on challenge. Nice. Crystal Maze Marathon. Nice. Loved it. Richard O'Brien era as well. Nice. Not uh not the what was the what was the other guy? He had curly like curly black hair. I can't remember his name. But it's all about a Richard O'Brien. Yes. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm just a sweet transvestite. You know he wrote the Rocky Horror Picture Show, don't you? Did he write it? Yeah, I Richard didn't O'Brien. realize he wrote it. No. Yeah, wrote it, produced it. Yes, Richard. indeed. I enjoyed him in Dark City as well. He's very good in that. Very creepy. Dark City. You not seen Dark City? No. That's good. I enjoyed him in um, the episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Hush. Yes. <laughs> Is he a bad guy? No, you know not, what? He's, Those... not, he's not actually in it, but there's, there's a, a series of tall, bald, okay. demons. Like, they, creepy looking Do you know what? Characters. That's the, one of the scariest Buffy episodes. I think it is the scariest Buffy episode. Do you know what? I rewatched it the other day. It's pretty scary. Because Maddie and I, my girlfriend and They I, grab the heart. They grab your heart. Yeah, out, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. A bit Kalima. The thing is, the thing, have you, you ever watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer or else? I've seen some of them, yeah. Yeah, this, this, this episode, it's kind of one of those like, really famous ones, isn't it? Yeah, like, it's, so, it's, really, it's really well done. Really critically acclaimed as well. And... Um, it's fucking scary. And I, I just got hold of, of them all because we finished watching them about six months ago now. And uh, so I thought I'll just sort of watch through some of the highlights of it. I was sitting at home. I think it was actually after podcast. And I, I put that on just before I went to bed. 
And I kind of forgot how creepy when you initially see them. Because these guys, they kind of, they float. That's the creepiest thing. They don't walk anywhere. They kind of float everywhere. Yeah. And they're really tall in suits. And they're like, they've got like big sort of like round, bald heads and these really big teeth. And they're always like this sort like of like. Grinning. Yeah, like they're, they're, like the they're, they're, smile. they're smiling, but their their eyes aren't smiling. And the first time you see them, someone they basically and they're completely silent. Basically, as well. everyone in the town loses their voice, and that is how they they go around. They they everyone in the town loses their voice, so no one can hear you scream. And so everyone's lost their voice, and I can't remember who it is. Looks out the window, and one of the guys floats past the window, looking forward and then looks round at the window and his teeth are bearing and he just floats past the window it i just thought like holy shit this is creepy this used to be shown on bbc at 6 30 yeah yeah there's a buffy down 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 trying to think of the buffy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say nerf herder but yeah for a minute i thought it was offspring no, no, no. it's got it's got a great um little like bass run in it. I think it's the the second uh like verse go. It does this like there's an open that goes doom do 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 do. I I love that. Every time I heard it, I thought, oh, that's nice. Sweet bass, sweet bass, bro. Uh, I have a solution for the problem. Go on. While we were talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, go on. Uh. Buffet slayers, now I'm joking. Um, <laughs> buffet then? Buffy, buffet. Buffy, buffet. Buffy, no, buffet the something slayer as a name for uh We should podcast. actually call this this episode Buffet the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Um, well, that's that solved. Uh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. We've, solved the, we've solved the problem we're not supposed to be solving. We're efficient. Um, but think about this. Invisible food. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Dom has lost his mind no 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 right okay so Please elaborate how am I going to know when I'm eating you go up to, you prawns? go up to the the buffet obviously this in, this engenders a lot of trust on your part to the person who's made the buffet yeah but you go behind of a, which I have none you go behind a curtain and so no one sees what you pick up and you go sit back down and you just sort of oh, so it's not actually invisible no 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 the buffet food is invisible because you can sit back down and no one can see what you've picked up. So no one can see the amount. You don't know what you're putting up. your finger in. You oh. might put your finger in the middle of a pickle. I think I got... Are your poos invisible? Yes, because the food's <laughs> invisible. <laughs> but then you don't know if you've done one or not. How do you know when you finish wiping? Good point. Oh, that's true. I think that I have... Okay, it's a bad a, idea. ...a possible solution. Yeah. A po- or at least a step towards a solution. So, you know when you go to sort of like a wedding or something mm. like that? I'm attending one in a couple of weeks, actually. And... Um, you get kind of sometimes there's some sort of buffet food, but what I'm referring to largely here is the the free selection of alcohol. Because usually you get sort of like there's an allowance, isn't there? So each table will have a certain amount of bottles of wine. Yes. And what I find is that someone always gets sort of like the word spreads like wildfire around the wedding that, you know, Auntie Mavis has sunk three bottles of wine by herself or that table over there, they've had loads of the wine, like, yeah. and, you know, where everyone else is being it becomes sort a of, division. is being sort of a little bit reserved about it. So I think that maybe the buffet, large buffets should be divided up into more, sort of, into smaller parts of a sort of a restaurant so that the kind of, I don't know, so that so that you're almost sort of like shamed into eating a reasonable amount. But the thing is, no, I don't like this solution because I feel like this is going towards people eating less. But I want to eat more at a buffet. Yeah, I yeah. want to be able to eat as much as I fucking want. Yeah, no, without no, the shame, no. shame, shame. Um. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> you're right, mate. Okay, Dom's broken. No, I'm. He's, forming, gone from, he's gone from invisible food to an invisible solution. I'm forming. Forming is processing. Processing. It. Create a mind map. Buffering. Go to your mind palace. Buffering. Gah! Right, okay, what about this? Um, so the buffet is underneath the room. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, each table... I like it already. Each table has a certain amount of places, and the plate is popped on top, a little elevator. You have an iPad at your... Um, 
at your space on the table and you put in like your place number. Um, Because obviously the people around the table don't really care what you're eating. No. Because you're normally sitting with people like family, friends, whatever. You just put in exactly what you want as many times as you want it. And it keeps on going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. I am going to tell you why I do not like this idea. Finger trapping. No, it's not, oh. not the finger trapping. Does it mean that someone has to touch your food down there? No, it's because... Because I was thinking robot arms. I like arms. to pick my own, though. If there's a pile of stuff, I want that one. I'm you, want, you want the biggest I want, pie? I want that I've one. That's the nicest got, looking one. got two words for you. Scotch eggs. Yeah. Right. You offer me a scotch egg now. Yeah. I wouldn't have it. Not, not really that big on scotch eggs. Uh, so you say, Dan, I've, I brought three scotch eggs. I would say someone else can have mine. 99% of the time, don't eat scotch eggs. However, sometimes when I'm at a buffet, if I've got a little selection on my plate, which co- complements a scotch egg, so little mini sausages, maybe a little sausage roll, maybe a cheese sausage roll, if, yep. uh, like a, a little slice of quiche. Mm. Maybe a spring roll if it's an exotic buffet. Yes, very nice. Because uh, I often, often, often get those. Yes. Sometimes I see some little uh, samosas and stuff like that. Yeah, like, I enjoy we, those. We go, the spicy ones. Yeah, ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, that sort of stuff on there. With that kind of plate, I think to myself, well, I'd be cheating myself if I didn't have a couple of mini scotch eggs. So I eat scotch eggs. But if you put that on a menu in front of me, you wouldn't I, wouldn't, I would never have those scotch eggs. So you're saying seeing the food, seeing the food, seeing the food in front, food in front. How of about this? Bite-sized pieces. Makes How about me this? More likely Before to eat it. everyone sits down for food, you're allowed to go into the buffet room and have a viewing. Oh, <laughs> you're very formal, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's changing. Table seven. Could you please go downstairs for your viewing? Your viewing time is now. And, Table and, seven. Your and buffet al- viewing. And also, just you know, something something puts me off about like I I stack my buffet plate in a particular way. Yeah, same. Yeah. It's going to come yeah. up in the wrong order. Yeah, I don't like the idea of someone else doing my plate for me because the whole. Well, no, no, it'd be robot there. arms. <laughs> so, am I controlling the robot arms? Well, you can have a drag and drop system where you can drag and drop the bits that you want onto the plate where you want them, and can the I, robots will do it. Can I pick the exact piece of pizza I want? Well, you'd have the viewing because oh the, the the toppings are just perfect on that. So, one. each table would have their viewing, then their selection. What if two people pick the same piece of pizza that I want? Well, then we go to round two, which is the knockout round. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. Cool. Roll a d20. Right. Say, <laughs> Roll say, for initiative. Say first of all, I'm, I'm going I'm to abstract this out, and then I'm going to give you the solution here, right? Okay. So, okay. There, I'm ready. There, there is an amount of money, right? Everyone at a party gets an amount of money, right? So oh, I like it. There's a hundred pounds. Buffet bucks. There's a hundred pounds, right? There's a hundred pounds here, right? And you look around the party... And, but what you have to do is you have to go up there and divide it as equally as you can, right? What you're going to do is, is you, you have to go up there and take what you think is your share of that money, right? If, right. You, if you take too much, like, you know, more than say 15, 20% more or less, then everybody loses. So you've all got to make a decision in silence right now to decide how much money you go up there and take. So you, so there's a hundred pounds to be divided around. You look around the room and there's roughly... 24 people there. I'd take roughly £33.33 33 right now. That's a third. Yeah, you've got to lose that's everyone my, their money. That's my share. No, it's not. It's £100 between 24 people. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 I'm saying, yeah, right, yeah, so, sorry. So you look, oh, around, right, yeah. you look around the party and there's around about 24 yeah. people. Yeah. Right? So you do a sort of a, you know, a bit of a guesstimate and you think... Well, Surely between, you can do more than a guesstimate. Well, Surely you can work that out. Well, no, you've you got, you got to decide now. You've got to do it in silence. You've got no working out, no phones, no nothing, right? Just do a bit of a guesstimate and say, well, there's 24 people here. So let's say 25. Between 100 pounds, between a roughly 25 people, let's say four pounds. You're going gonna to go out there and take four pounds, right? Mm. So what I'm saying is when a buffet is supplied, they have a total, like a running total on a board with the buffet. So you can see what is left up there. Because then if there's 100 pork pies and there's 25 people in the room. You can sort of say to yourself, well, I am kind of entitled to four pork pies if I want them. Yeah. So if you've only had two and you can still see that there's, you know, 20 left up there, then you can... You know the two of them are yours. You know that about two of them are my pork pies. So it gives everyone some sort of like baseline of what is too much and what is too little. Because then that is when you sit there, you know, chatting. Because, you know, I know what it's like. You sit at a buffet and I say, oh, I don't normally enjoy a scotch egg, but I always have one at a buffet. 
but I wouldn't have my three. You know, say there's two or three on offer. At which point, Dom, if you want a Scotch egg, you know that there's another couple of Scotch eggs on offer there. You can go and have yours. That's it good. kind of self-regulates it. But you can also see, to, because the other thing that I find excruciating with a buffet is going up to get something that I, that I have previously enjoyed at the buffet to find that there's none of it left. Because then you've gone up there, you've, you've fired a blank. You've gone yeah. up there, you've, everyone's seen you go up a third time, for example, and you're coming back with nothing. And you feel like you've got to come back with something. So now you just look, now you just got scotch eggs. Now you just, just look like a guy who's just going up there and taking whatever he can get. Yeah. As opposed to... I really like that solution. Because you can see, you look up at the board and go, oh, there's, there's 20 mini pizzas left. And everyone's, everyone's been up at least Never twice. 20 mini pizzas left. <laughs> yeah, but if you, know, if you know, oh, there's 10 people here and they bought 300 mini pizzas, you know you can have a shitload of them. A self-regulating yeah. ecosystem. It is, yeah. yeah. I love it. I think it's very, it's actually very, um, what's the, what, what do they say? Beautiful solution or something like that, you know. It's a, like a very um, elegant elegant solution. Yeah. So th- this, is, this, is, this is what I propose. So it's society within a party. Because also. It's a great social experiment, actually. Well, we should run it. Also, if I am at a, uh, a buffet quite often, so I, I, do, I do the, oh, can you grab me this when you go up there? Yep. If, you know, like, for, say my girlfriend goes up to get a plate of food and I've already enjoyed my plate of food and she's going up a second time, then I might say, oh, grab me one of those, you know, grab me one more of those brownies or one of those sausage rolls. They were really nice. But you can, you know, at a glance see, like, look around and go, oh, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, there's some sausage rolls left. Can you grab me one of those, please? Yeah. Without being greedy. You know, roughly, you know, everyone can do that basic bit of maths in their head. That's elegant. I like it. I don't think I could come up with anything better. Each person could even be given, they, they know at the beginning of the night how many of everything there is. Because that, that you could be given a list of how many of each thing you're entitled to. Because I think that's the real problem. And then you could buffet, have isn't it? trades across the room. Yeah. yeah. It would I, always be like a stock trading I, floor. I, yeah, I, think I don't that, want my scotch eggs. I trade you for a mini pizza. I, th- yeah. I think the real problem with a buffet is that no one ever really appreciates the scale of it. You see all of the food out in front of you and you think to yourself, well, I don't want to be too greedy and keep going up there and eating and stuff like that. But as you say, people always end up with like, say for like my mum's 50th birthday birthday we got loads of plat- night. loads of platters of sandwiches and wraps and all sorts of like cakes and treats and stuff like that we were coming home with so much of it at the end and, and i tried hard and yeah i had, <laughs> I, I had quite a lot but we're going around the party going please help yourself to food because we've bought there is yeah there's more than enough for everyone but you, as, no matter how many times you tell people there's more than enough food here, there's yeah. more than enough to, food you don't get like a like a real tangible sense of the scale of it you know there was enough yeah. for for everyone to have probably 20 fucking sandwiches at that shindig yeah. but like no one gets a scale of it you know most people they go and even up if and, dom has 30 sandwiches he's still not taking up yeah everyone's exactly share. i'm not exactly. even making a dent nope. so yeah i really like your solution okay. i'm might call it yeah if you want to what's the time what's how many times half hour half hour mm. I'm just going to say, I can't think of anything better, can you? No. I mean, we have to be finely tu- tuned a little further with carveries. Ah, uh, well, carveries are a different story, man. Yeah, but I always found with a carvery that the stuff doesn't tend to run out. It just keeps coming out and coming out and coming out. That's true. Yeah. See, that's Never the been thing to a carvery. Is, especially with like a restaurant buffet. <laughs> and when they run out of actual meat, they start killing their employees yeah. out the back. Because exactly. the thing is, like, it doesn't, it doesn't really apply to restaurant buffets. This sort of applies to... Party buffets, yeah. where the food well, is bought, and it's, where the food is bought, there's a finite what, amount of what, things. Finite what food. you could do is, um, obviously, you guys have both worked in um, retail on a counter based, yes, uh, yes. D- yeah. department. So, Ross, you worked on um, Tesco's deli, the deli, you worked Dom on the deli and hot food. And I, I, well, I did hot food and fish and, and bitches. I worked in the bakery all of them at some so, point. You know that there's quite a lot of wastage at the end of the week, right? Oh, you, yes. get, you, get, you get the food mm. out you know, cakes or meats or whatever. And if it doesn't sell and it goes, you can only have it out for a certain amount of time, which I can imagine is probably the same in a carvery. Yep. Although yeah. saying that in some of the carveries I've been to, I yeah. think there's probably a little bit more lax. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's at least yesterday's ham, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's been sitting out the back for three weeks. Mm. Um, so I think that what you need in like a carvery is like, um, you know, like when you go to the doctors and there's a little board that says, you know, there were last month, 
there were 387 missed appointments. This is blah, blah, blah. It's this amount of time. You, you know, you've cost the ANHS this amount of money. I yeah. think they should, should give you a baseline. You know, this, this carvery orders in, orders in daily enough food for each person to have two slices of chicken, two slices of ham, two slices of beef, two slices of pork, two Yorkshire puddings, eight potatoes. You know, like I can imagine it's quite a substantial amount of thing. Yeah. And then that way they'll have less wastage. Then if you go up and have, you have the plate that you sort of, you know, like a normal roast dinner size, you know, maybe a couple of bits of meat, three or four potatoes, you know, maybe four, five or six for some people, vegetables, gravy. Three potatoes is fine for me. Yorkshire pudding. If they're crispy and nice, yeah. I'll, I'll have five. No, no, but five or three, six for me. Three is about yeah. the most. I'll, I'll five or six for me, but the meat has to be at least four or five slices. Yeah, I like I like yeah. I, I, I like quite thickly sliced meat as well. Thickly sliced meat. Yeah, um, especially if it's beef. I don't you, like thinly sliced beef. Then if you know peas. that, I love peas, man. Then I'm not a big fan of peas. So the thing is, if you know that, because like you know, when you go for like you know dinner at grandma's or something like that, and you get like a oh, great big roast dinner, mm. and then she says. There's extra potatoes and extra meat if anyone wants it, and they put, and she puts it in the middle of the table. You can see how much there is, so you think to yourself, "Well, that's going to go to waste. I'll have another slice of meat and another potato, a bit more gravy." You know what I mean? Like, but you can't see that in a carvery. No, you cannot no. see it. But if you know that you've eaten well below what the what, average, like, is is sort of not even just the average, but what is there, what is available to yeah. people, it will average out because for every person that has two plates in there, there'll be someone that only has half a plate. Yeah, there'll be someone that doesn't like gammon or doesn't like chicken, so you you know that on average you can you can go up and you you can sort of probably slightly exceed that that quota. So what if there was like a graph where the graph was slowly tallying down, and you could see if you went up to the meat and you weren't overly fussed about which meat you had, and you saw there was more pork left than there was beef. Yeah, so you when could you, go, oh, there's more beef. Yeah, yeah. when, like, you, when you're going up for seconds, you if you had you know you had beef and gammon, and then you said you didn't have pork or chicken, chicken right? Well, I did technically have pork with the gammon. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you're going up the second time and, you know, the, the gammon maybe is looking a little bit sparse on the little silver tray. With the spike in it. And you think to yourself, well, you know, like, you know I don't want to don't be greedy, but I can see that there is an entire joint of pork left here. Then you can kind of think to yourself, well, I'll, I'll treat myself to some pork then. Perfect. Another elegant solution. Yeah. I'm going to call it solved. All right. Boom. So, a name. I think we've got a name, but I've just made a bit of a... Uh, I think I don't think you're going to beat Buffet the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> uh, I can. Yeah? Buffet the Vampire Slayer. Oh, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> or do you want to keep it as vampire? No, no, no. I think vampire is fine. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Named Buffet the Vampire Slayer. Right then. Lovely. No editing for me this week. <laughs> oh, yes. How I like it. I will. This is the kind of episode that would be perfect for a live stream because the uh, end would be uh, very, very fast and smooth and people don't have to sit yeah. here watching us going twiddling our thumbs. Anyway, let me. But alas. Let me count us out. So you can get in contact with us through stickypod.com. It'll be your hub for all our contact details. Our email, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that crazy shit. Um, our email, by the way, is flingit at stickitpob.com. We want you to send us your problems. We have a bulging sack full of problems, but we want it to bulge even more. We want it to be distended like a Ooh. dog's stomach after giving birth to a litter of puppies. <laughs> that was gross. So please send us your problems, send us your pictures, send us your Dan mail, send us your Ross Gilbert's correction send erections. Send us your nudes. Send us your Dom <laughs> plaints. Send us your news. Send us pictures of yourself doing various things, except for naked nudes, as they call them. Except for naked. <laughs> except for naked. You can send us nudes, but not naked. I'll let you figure out what the difference is. On that note, please get in contact. We love you all once again for listening. Um, just to let you know, for a few weeks, we might be not patchy. Ross will be patchy for a few weeks coming up. Um, so we'll Guess have- Guess who else is going to be patchy? Dan. Dan's going to be patchy <laughs> for once. So, um, Captain Flaky. We're hoping, <laughs> we're hoping to get all those sort of bits covered, but we might fail in that. But 
we might double up on one recording session or something like that. Yeah. But for the months of June and July, we're going to have a lot of guests in. Yep. I think. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Got to go on the Holly Bobs. Dan's going on his Holly Bobs. I'm going for my yearly um, vision quest. Um, <laughs> I'm going to Wales to work on the elections. Oh, excellent. Ah. Yeah. Good. Brilliant. I'll bring you back some POG. And for that note, for this week, I've been Dom. I've been Ross. And I've been Dan. Oink, 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 oink.